And our in-depth back-to-school coverage continues now. Sports, big part of the high school experience. Many students join a team for scholarship opportunities to stay active and really just for the love of the game. But there's a growing concern for parents and coaches about severe injuries on the field, especially concussions. I want to see anchor Mike Montecavo takes a closer look at how coaches are working to protect their athletes. Technology and training has changed dramatically over the years. Improvements on equipment and the way teams practice in hopes of cutting down on players sustaining concussions. Football, arguably America's most watched sport. From high school to the pros, millions can't seem to get enough. But with the hits and collisions comes a price. While injuries are part of the game, a real focus has been put on protecting all players, especially the prevention of concussions, a traumatic brain injury that's caused by a bump, blow, or a jolt to the head or body. The damage can be devastating. Baseline testing through the Rhode Island Concussion Management Consortium is one way of keeping kids safe. And so what we do is we go into schools and we give a cognitive test. It's a series of six subtests that measure reaction time, memory, and we get a baseline of students' cognitive abilities. A doctor can give a post-concussive test of the same test and to compare the pre-results and the post-results of the concussion. LaSalle Academy has been proactive about concussions for years. The high school's athletic trainer uses a similar test. It's a neurological concussion assessment tool. Uh, it's done on the computer. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes on the computer. You can t we do it in the computer lab. We do about 30 athletes at a time, uh, and we primarily test the contact athletes. An athlete is tested upon joining the team. Then if he or she gets hurt, the staff compares the results to the baseline. And if the player is still showing symptoms of a concussion, they're sent to a doctor. After a player is cleared by a physician, they automatically go through a six-step process. So obviously rest. Uh, aerobic activity, anaerobic sports specific activities, uh, non-contact practice, full contact practice, and then return to play. Do you see that you want other things changed too? Yeah, I think contact and practice, you know, we're, we're really working forward to changing our contact policy. Like we do tackling drills with no, it's all with dummies. It's never live tackling. It's never against another guy. It's always against a dummy. And if it is against another guy, we take our helmets off and we tackle with our helmets off and we talk about taking the head out of the game. Coach Jeff Marcone tells me he's implemented techniques he learned through USA football and attending clinics. Pete Carroll has a, a, a great new way of tackling and we're trying to implement that here where you where some of the drills you are done tackling are done with no helmet. So the kid has to use his shoulder and, and he has to get his head out of the way. You know, and it's done, you know, very slowly. We don't 100 miles an hour, but it's done incrementally so the kids understand that you know, you put your head in harm's way, you know, something could happen. Coaches must complete a concussion course before each season annually. And while football is number one, still a high number in hockey, lacrosse, and girls soccer. And Rob tells me he wants to start testing cheerleaders after seeing them suffer concussions. Mike Montecalvo, Eyewitness News. So what do you think? Is your child's school doing enough to keep the athletes safe from these concussions? We'd like you to join the conversation at our WPRI 12 Facebook page and weigh in. Our back to school coverage continues all morning and tonight on Iowa's News starting live at 5. Here's what's coming up at 7 a.m. over on Fox Providence, taking a look at student athlete particip participation, excuse me, been on precipitation's been on the brain with right, Ramin right. in the area the last couple of weeks. In any event, tell you which sports have seen a decrease over the past few decades and which ones are growing more popular in Rhode Island. And at 8 a.m. on Fox Providence, important advice for you and your college student. Consumer reporter Susan Campbell has a list of legal documents you should consider getting in order before your teen heads off for a higher education.